What's up everyone, my name is Ale, welcome back to my world of stocks and welcome back to one of my newest series on the channel called Three Stocks That The Rich Elites Are Buying. And in each episode, I specifically choose three very large billionaire investors or gigantic hedge funds and I cover a stock that they are buying a massive amount of and I give you my personal opinion on it. I let you know if I would consider buying that stock myself and I also rank them from best to worst just to make the video a little more fun and interesting. But to be honest, this is probably my favorite new series on the channel. I'm having a lot of fun doing this. I think it's a really interesting topic because these gigantic hedge funds, these billionaire investors, they're the ones that really move the market. So I think it's really interesting to see what they're buying. But if you enjoy the series too, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. Let's me know you wanna see more videos like this and it also helps keep the channel alive. So I really appreciate it, thank you for that. But with that said, in today's episode, we actually have a pretty interesting little twist. I'm actually going to cover stocks that are heavily impacted by the pandemic. And so I'm gonna let you know why these rich elites are buying these stocks in particular because they're actually benefiting from pandemic related policies. So it's gonna be a very interesting video. I hope you guys enjoy it, but let's just go ahead and jump straight into the list. All right, and what better way to start things off here than by looking at one of the most outspoken figures during the whole pandemic time period in Bill Gates, who is of course famous for creating Microsoft and is now one of the richest people in the world with a net worth of almost a hundred billion dollars. He is also the owner and portfolio manager of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, which currently has around $18 billion worth of stocks under its name. And in their last reported quarter, one of their biggest purchases was that of Deer and Company stock, ticker symbol DE. Now, this is a stock that they've actually been purchasing consistently in recent quarters, but this last one, they more than tripled their, their position on it, which was a gigantic increase of 335%, bringing their total stake in the company to about 4 million shares and worth over $1.2 billion. Now, Deere is of course heavily tied to industrial agriculture as they build various machinery through their very popular John Deere brand among other things. And in terms of how this ties to the pandemic, well, look, first of all, some people think of Bill Gates as a hero while others think of him as a villain, but something that both sides can probably agree on is that he clearly knows how to make money off of government policies. And while the pandemic lockdowns destroyed small businesses and sent inflation skyrocketing for consumers because of all the money that we printed, those policies actually helped the agriculture sector by sending commodity prices soaring. For example, wheat, soy, corn, and grain prices are all now at near record highs. And all the meanwhile, Bill Gates has continuously adv advocated for these policies while in the background using a ton of smaller subsidiaries that he owns to privately purchase more than a quarter of a million acres of farmland in the United States, making him now the largest private farmland owner in all of America. Not to mention, of course, his heavy investment into agricultural related companies like John Deere. And so at a time when so many other companies have been struggling because of the weak macro economy that was literally in a recession earlier this year, well, John Deere has actually been putting up huge growth. And by the way, I'm just gonna refer to them as John Deere. I know it's a brand, but I'm gonna refer to the company as John Deere. Anyway, they've been seeing a lot of growth, reaching a record high in sales last year that grew by close to 30% and is still expected to skyrocket by another almost 20% this year and almost another double digit climb of 9% the following year as well, which is of course very uncommon for this type of business. They're usually very slow you know, moving companies, but in Deere's case, their earnings per share are actually expected to climb by double digit percentage each year through the next five years. And as a result, the stock has more than doubled in value since the start of the pandemic. Now, usually Deere would trade as more of a value, uh, kind of a low growth value stock. But because of that pandemic boost, the stock is now trading at about the same P ratio as the sector or slightly even more expensive. And while the dividend has some very attractive growth metrics on it, like a low payout ratio of only 22% and a double digit growth rate, 
the yield is pretty low at these higher levels at only around 1%. So while I think that overall Deer is usually a good stock to invest in long term because they have a really strong brand, I don't think they're ever going away. And given the rise in agriculture that will probably get an even bigger boost from the whole climate change movement, I think they do have a lot of potential there. But I just personally feel that the stock has already climbed by so much that there isn't as much upside potential with deer at these levels as there are with other stocks in the market that have been beaten down by a lot worse. I'm just personally not the biggest fan of this stock at this time and the dividend is also too low to kind of change my mind on that. So I'd rather be investing elsewhere. I'm not gonna be picking up deer stock myself uh, probably anytime soon. All right, guys, moving on here to, to the next stock that is heavily benefiting from the pandemic and any policies kind of related to it. Uh, that's going to come from none other than BlackRock, which is the largest hedge fund in the entire world with a mind blowing estimated portfolio value of over three trillion dollars. It's crazy how much money BlackRock has. And by the way, Larry Fink is the CEO who founded BlackRock with seven other members. But yeah, no surprise here. One of their biggest purchases last quarter was another 27 million shares of the pharmaceutical giant Pfizer, ticker symbol PFE, bringing their total to over 400 million shares worth over $22 billion in the stock. And of course, Pfizer has been all the rage these last couple years as they've sold more V shots for the pepperoni that, than any other company out there. In fact, the pandemic has been so lucrative for Pfizer that their pepperoni V shot was not only the best selling drug in the world last year at almost three times the next closest competitor. But check this out, if you think that's crazy, Pfizer sells more than 300 different drugs just in, in the United States alone. Internationally, it's way more, but just in the US, it's over 300 different products that before the pandemic generated around $40 billion in revenue. And yet just that one single V shot did almost the same amount of sales as all of their products combined last year at $37 billion. That's insane. And to make things even more crazy, their new oral drug for the pepperoni is estimated to bring in about $25 billion just on its own too. So when you combine the two, you end up with over $60 billion of revenue. That's like $20 billion more than all of their products combined. And the craziness doesn't even stop there, guys. In terms of overall size, Pfizer will now be uh, more than doubling their sales to over $100 billion, which will make them the largest pharmaceutical company in the entire world just because of essentially that V shot, you know, essentially because of the pepperoni, which by the way, that was a title that was previously held by Johnson & Johnson for many years, being the largest pharmaceutical company in the world. No one has, you know, no one was even like coming close to them in size, and yet they do around 95 billion in sales. So just from the pandemic alone, Pfizer went from doing less than half the sales of J&J, &J, not even really like a threat to them, to now literally being even larger than Johnson & Johnson. That's so crazy. And remember, all of this was basically free money that's been given to Pfizer because most of the development for their V-Shot was actually subsidized by the US government. So the US government basically made Pfizer the largest pharmaceutical company in the world for free. And now Pfizer is using all of that free money to become even larger. Just this year alone, Pfizer has already closed three giant acquisitions, including Reviral for over half a billion dollars, Arena Pharmaceuticals for almost $7 billion, and Biohaven for over $11 billion. Plus, they're growing their product, pi product pipeline that already has close to 100 different drugs going through trials as we speak. And yet, despite all of that success, the current market crash has brought down Pfizer by over 30% from its highs and left it trading at a 52-week low. Part of that is because Wall Street is pricing in that the pepperoni will slowly go away and thus Pfizer will no longer be making all of this free money anymore in the future. 
But I would counter that argument by saying that Pfizer stock is only up 25% in the past five years, despite the company being insanely larger and much stronger than where it was back then, thanks to all that money that they've been investing. And yet it's currently trading at a dirt cheap valuation that is almost 50% cheaper than their own five year average and over 60% cheaper than the sector as well on a price to earnings ratio. Obviously, that valuation is boosted a bit by all that extra money that they're making from the pandemic. But even if you wipe away all of those gains from the pandemic and double their valuation, they would still be cheaper than the sector. So in my opinion, the stock is still dirt cheap if you're thinking long term. Plus, speaking about it as a long term investment, you have to remember that Pfizer also pays one of the most attractive dividends in the sector with over a 3.6% yield and a tiny payout ratio with a double digit growth rate. So that dividend is likely very safe at this point too. I mean, I'll wait to give it an official ranking until the end of the video, but Compared to Deer stock, I prefer Pfizer way more. I think it's super cheap at these levels. It's why I own the stock myself. I'm actually open to buying more too. And I think a lot of people are really sleeping on Pfizer right now. I think they're not aware of just how massively large this company is becoming. I think BlackRock sees it. I think they see the same value here that I see, which is why they're investing in it. But overall, I think people are kind of sleeping on Pfizer. But I really do like the stock here, uh, especially for the long term. All right, guys, finishing up here with stock number three, we're going to turn to another billionaire investor in Cliff Asnes, who is the co-founder and acting manager of the giant hedge fund AQR Capital Management, which has over $44 billion worth of stocks. And no surprise here, they too have been investing super heavy in a stock that is heavily affected by the pandemic policies, and that stock is is Tyson Foods, ticker symbol TSN, which they've been consistently investing in for some time, but this latest quarter, they nearly doubled their position on it, bringing up their total investment to nearly $300 million. Now, if you shop at grocery stores for meat, then you've probably heard of Tyson Foods as they're the second largest processor and seller of chicken, beef, and pork in the entire world. And they're especially famous for their chicken, which they sell in raw packages in frozen form like strips and chicken nuggets. They have healthier grilled options too. And they also have sub brands like ballpark hot dogs and patties, Jimmy Dean, which is famous for like sausages, biscuits, and gravy. Uh, they also have Hillshire Farms, famous for like meats and especially deli meats and things like that. And they've even entered into the plant-based meat market too with various offerings, which has been a very high growth market in recent years because of the rise in popularity of movements like climate change and vegetarianism and things like that. These are plants, these are meat, these are like artificial meat that is made out of plants. In fact, this is a market that was already worth over $5 billion last year, but it's still expected to skyrocket to over $30 billion by 2030 with compound uh, annual growth of over 20% per year. On top of that, Tyson has also benefited from the pandemic lockdown policies as the destruction of the economy has led to not only food shortages, but also rising inflation, which has raised the prices of their products. You can look at virtually any chart you want out there for any meat product and you'll find that prices have skyrocketed. Ground beef in America, for example, is up well over 30% from the start of the pandemic. And while that obviously hurts regular consumers like you and me, it ultimately boosted the profits of Tyson so much so that it even sent the stock climbing to a record high at the start of this year before the market came crashing down hard. In fact, their profits soared by almost 50% last year. And while Tyson's business is typically low growth during normal times, their sales actually soared by 9% last year and another 12% as is expected this year. Unfortunately for Tyson though, inflation will probably cool off eventually and that's why analysts are expecting their sales growth to correct back down to around 2% next year. But because of that lower growth in the future expected, coupled with the broader stock market crash, Tyson's stock has now crumbled this year to a fresh 52 week low as it is down over 35% from its highs and is actually negative over the past five years. 
With that fall in the stock price though, may come a buying opportunity and that's why Cliff has been loading up on the stock because as of right now, Tyson is trading well below even the most bearish price targets by analysts while also carrying a dirt cheap valuation that is close to 50% cheaper than their own average and closer to 70% cheaper than the rest of the sector as well. Plus, their dividend yield has now climbed up to just about a record high for them at almost 3%. And it's got some fantastic growth metrics on it too, like a tiny payout ratio of less than 20%, a pretty high growth rate of over 15%, and a double-digit growth history to go along with it. So yeah, at these levels, I can totally understand why Cliff would be buying Tyson stock. I think it's a very solid value dividend stock with still some elements of growth added to it. Good valuation, very strong brand. I don't think it's ever going away. Solid business and still some even growth potential with things like plant-based meats and so on. So I really like Tyson, but Pfizer is still my favorite out of this list. I think that's the stock that people are sleeping on the most and they don't realize just how gigantic of a pharmaceutical giant this is becoming. So I would still put Pfizer as number one. That's the stock that I'm invested in that I feel the most confident about. Tyson at number two, I don't own it yet, but it's very high up on my watch list. There's other dividend stocks I like, I like a little more, but Tyson I think is still a solid choice. And then I'd put Deer at number three. And to be honest, I really have no interest in owning Deer stock. I'm just not that interested in it. But who cares what I think, guys? I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. What do you think about these stocks, these investors, the moves they're making? I'd love to hear your thoughts down there and I'll respond to your comments. Thank you again for stopping by. I really appreciate all the support. I hope you're all doing well and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.